and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to usher you in into the weekend. It is the weekend of October 31st. It is the 29th today. And we're here to talk a little bit about what's happening in the news. There's just, there's just a lot of things happening, a lot of things not happening, and a lot of other things that I want to show you today for my morning show. I got a special video for you guys, and I also have another episode of Dove and Stuff from the 1969 movie, It's Alive. So... Let's kick, like to kick things off with some news quickums. Uh, Facebook CEO uh, Mark Zuckerberg announced the name change of Facebook yesterday to Meta, part of the new push to influence teens into their metaverse. They bought you know, Oculus, Instagram, and all that stuff. Uh, most of uh, the teens are fleeing the Facebook world and moving towards TikTok, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg is looking... Uh, to uh, try to encourage the young kids of today to uh, join their social media platform where they could uh, steal your data and uh, do personalized ads towards you. The U.S. is making a major push to extradite Julian Assange, who exposed the U.S. military's hypocrisy and how other tyrannical leaders of the world use him and is an example of corruption in uh, countries that don't support their free journalists, uh, continuing the fake news rhetoric that we all come to know. Uh, still, uh, no news from the final approval from the COVID-19 shot for uh, 5 to 11-year-olds. So far, it's being uh, officially approved by the FDA, and then the CDC will look into it for uh, final recommendation. And the infrastructure factor slashes all the good programs like paid leave in support of the continued low taxes on the rich and corporation while bowing to Christian Cinema and Joe Manchin. Missoula is in need of emergency winter shelter workers as soon as possible. M um, Missoula POV is looking to hire on-site coordinators for their emergency shelters. This would be a $15 an hour gig with $500 a month bonus per month with a finishing bonus of $1,500. E uh, even part-timers would get about $250 a month. Um, I did the math on this and you would easily walk away with about $20,000 in the 26 weeks that'll be, uh, which will be the equivalent of about $20 an hour. Uh, the year, uh, the, the half a year which this job starts November 1st and goes through April of 2022, uh, 200000 is kind of just lowballing it because in many cases the overnight morning gigs, not to mention there's uh, many chances of overtime just because of there's just an overall lack of people looking to be on part of this. So even if you work five to ten more hours a week on top of the full time, you may be walking with an extra three to five thousand dollars easily for this one. But also, uh, one of the big things and the big changes that they're doing is that they're going to have security. They hired uh, Rogers LLC, Universal Rogers Security System, which uh, is going to be around to mitigate and de-escalate situations that may arise. But they also have some onboard uh, social social work and therapy for those of you who are working there to uh, you know help you out and give you the support that you need. And if you're interested, you can go to the pavarellcenter.org slash about slash jobs or you can google Pavarella jobs and get the link uh, montana is going through our congressional map so there's a big kind of push going back and forth there's just a lot of uh, information going that way and i wanted to kind of bring up a map uh, just kind of see this to kind of show you guys and uh as you can see you know this is kind of like the idea of the congressional districts um it doesn't do it much justice but um the point of this one, so far the election will be in 2022, and this map will cover west side versus east side with various versions. Uh, the Battle of Bozeman, which as a college town is more liberal and would pretty much guarantee a Democratic in one of the seats. However, the Republican map would cover a larger chunk of the northwestern region covering Gallatin County uh, with the city of Bozeman, Belgrade, Manhattan, and Three Forks in the west and other parts of the county to the east. They look basically the same, but for some reason they cannot agree on some of the smaller features, which has to do with the northern region versus more of the southern region, western region of Montana. This is how it's going to be, but my guess is that the up, 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 upcoming lesson mostly will be about the eastern side, uh, while Matt Rosendale uh, covers the west uh, as a district are broken up. But then again, you have to understand that uh, you know both people, uh, you know, two seats are going to be up for the election every two years. The uh, U.S. Congress congressional seat uh, is always up for election, so it's kind of a toss-up. So we'll see exactly how uh, Montana uh, leans to vote because we'll be voting for two uh, congressional delegates. But of course, that's why th they're separating the map because two sides get to vote on who's going to represent that populace of people. 
Uh, da -da 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 -da. Of course, uh, the bigger issue coming from the new map was breaking up some of the counties. Lewis and Clark remapping would support GOP candidates and Dem map. Republican criticized how Flathead County with more to the east and the continental divide does not make any sense. Anyways, the map is very similar with some sections being left out and uh, it left out completely in one, while others slim out in the northern western part here. Once again, here is the map once ahead. Uh, while the road to Bozeman tends to uh, lean Democrat, uh, maybe we'll find middle ground, but that would be too boring for our cu current political climate. Shakes head. Moving on, <laughs> former Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Park Director uh, Martha Williams has been nominated by President Biden as Director of the U.S. Fish uh, and Wildlife Service, so she's stepping up to the uh, national stage. She served after former Governor Bullock appointed her from 2017 to 2020, being the first woman to head the department in Montana. She's already been serving as Deputy Director for the U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Services, and uh, so the progression seemed natural. All right, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about vaccines for kids. Uh, CDC says Pfizer is good to go for 5 to 11-year-olds, and we're still waiting for final approval by the end of this week, which uh, never really happened. But they said, like, if you look at the timeline, they said that if everything works out okay, uh, November uh, 2nd, maybe the date to move forward on the FDA followed by the approval by the CDC to recommend booster shops are actually happening in Missoula for people, not just for the 65 over and the immunocompromised and people with pre-existing condition. Turns out that there might be emergency use exemption for higher risk areas like Missoula. So of course, in the last couple of weeks, Missoula has been uh, bombarded with high uh, numbers of COVID and deaths. Uh, Missoula Health Department website states, uh, booster doses in the Pfizer Moderna vaccines are appropriate for individuals who have previously received two doses of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine in the last six months. So if you are uh, beyond six months, uh, you are uh, you are eligible for a booster. But like I always say, you should always call your doctor and ask him, like, hey, is this good for me? Should I get a booster? It's like, then they then just listen to them. And then uh, one of the things, if you are also, you know, if you don't have a good relationship with your doctor, one of the big, th big things you can always do, you can call the health department at 258-INFO for your latest COVID information. And you can also go to MissoulaInfo.com for more information about all your up-to-date COVID information like I just told you. All right, so that pretty much does it for that. Up next, we have something different, or should I say uh, something special. Uh, anyways, here's uh, Waluigi uh, <laughs> taking on a couple buildings. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Hey, it's a it's a big movie weekend. Uh, not really, but uh, let's talk a little bit about this upcoming movie, which is like Wes Anderson last week. We have yet another director. People are like, hey, I'm supposed to watch this for my media arts class. Comes Edgar Wright's latest movie, Last Night in Soho, starring a girl who will voice Princess Peach and other people in this time travel horror fantasy about losing yourself inside, pretending to be someone, only to have that someone take over your life. Uh, for those of you who are like, why can't things be like they were in the good old days of fashion and underpaid models? Uh, and overrated fashion designers everybody heard of, and more. You'll have cinematography tricks, and uh, only a director who likes uh, Sam Raimi films will use and try to watch a movie that is more uh, uh, psychological thriller than sci-fi fantasy. All right, up next we got a horror film. Horror movies missing the cutoff just before Halloween. You know, you got all your Halloween movies that come out er early October to kind of build up into this. This one's kind of like just like, okay, we got to at least get this out for 
ha Halloween, or at least October. Well, we have this uh, whitewashed Native American legend of the Wendigo antlers. The movie's called Antlers. I it's it's kind of clear. About a boy whose only family has become a beast of a natural use of antlers and a taste for human flesh. Uh, anyways, uh, watch a movie about a kid and his pet monster while trying to survive on his own and having trouble telling people about the monster he's stuck with. Deals a lot with trauma and more. Up next, we got anime, the anime. Uh, what yet another anime movie about a popular franchise about superpowered society trying to deal with a group of anti-superhero groups hell-bent on keeping the human race pure. My Hero Academia 3 World Mission, or World Hero Mission, yeah, this is, it's, it's, it's a big title. This is an anime, but before you scoff, have you tried scoffing? Uh, <laughs> what you see is what you get, a school superhero and not much else happens, but when it does, it justifies the one hour expo uh, exposition only to a true anime can do. All animes have tropes, a silent badass, the wide-eyed protagonist, and the quick to anger exploder boy who is angry because reasons. Uh, anyways, you need to watch uh, over 100 episodes and two other movies to get the background of, what, uh, of the story, uh, but hey, they will probably refresh all the same anime tropes, so you don't need to really kind of know anything. Up next, we got a uh, movie f featuring uh, uh, some folks and some monsters. Uh, hey, I can't do a uh, kind of like a Halloween uh, type episode of Wake of Missoula without showing some kind of a horror film for your dub and stuff. So here is It's Alive, but it has nothing to do with Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster. Here. Here is this. I see your gun, and I give you a wrench! Ooh. Oh, man, my gun! Somebody get that gun. I'm on it, my dear. <laughs> You'll never get that gun. So says I, random guy. <laughs> While you guys are busy getting the gun, I'm gonna escape. See you later! Oh, when did you get shot? Oh. Here, I have a couple paper towels. I can help you. You got any gauze or put some pressure on it? Or <laughs> Stop anything? talking. I'm, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Stay with me. And if you see a light, Excuse walk me. towards it. What? Mm, I don't think that's right. Well, at least I'm doing something about his wound. Hmm, did you <laughs> learn that from Google? Oh, no. No, this is not... This is not the time to argue against me. I'm doing something to help him. What are you doing? Maybe you should get the gun. Huh, put him out of his misery or what, whatever. But I'm trying to do something. Mm, don't make me hit you. Maybe if you try a little bit harder, mm? maybe you can do something about it. But no! <laughs> this is what men oh, did in the late oh, 60s. Oh, do you understand oh, that? Uh... It was really necessary, was it? You were being hysterical, and I had to do something about you. Uh, don't look at me like that. Fine, I'm gonna go get that gun. Maybe then I'll be right. Oh, um, I know how that sounded. All right, Mr. Gun. Where are you? Perhaps I will find you. There it is. Mmm, perfect. Hmm, if I was a betting man, I'm assuming this gun has at least three more bullets left in it. Hmm. And you saw that, didn't you? Can you believe he just slapped me like that? I was not being hysterical. I was trying to be as logical as I can. I'm doing the best I can. Just you better be quiet now. I hear something. I hear something coming from the depths of the cave. All right. I guess I'll humor you. Oh, you have to trust me on this one. It's hard to trust somebody who slaps someone. Ugh, this again? Come on, that was like five seconds ago. You should just forgive me. Well, I don't. I hope you have everything that's coming to you. Uh-oh. Karma! I'm the ghost of Christmas slaps. All right, I have a gun. Bang! Her, <laughs> You really think you can slap me with a bullet? Oh, if only that monster was the defenseless woman. Don't lump me in with you. You get what you deserve. This better not be an allegory <laughs> for the monster being a representation of man's hubris. Oh, it could be. I'm a representation of man's, uh, what was the word again? Hubris. Oh, thank you. No, no, oh, no, 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 don't do this nom, to me. Nom, nom, oh. Nom. Oh, oh, you taste good. No. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm Janet. Don't you ever forget that? Come on, you got let's that. get out of here. You got that. Come on. I thought you were shot or something. I am, but I... Are you kidding me? I got better, okay? <laughs> don't make me care. All right, time to get serious. Uh, 
not that I'm ever not serious, uh, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening within the city of Missoula. We're kicking things off with the city is buying four new trucks for the water company and getting electric parking commissioner scooters. Uh, they're going to get a couple of those for, you know, the parking commission driving the scooters around, giving tickets. Uh, TDS Cable TV franchise public hearing is set for November 1st. This is a kind of a big deal because this is a new cable company that's coming to Missoula who's looking to franchise with the city of Missoula, which may look into getting some more money to push towards MCAT. So that's kind of a big deal for MCAT. Uh, Rogers International Security will be used for the POV and their winter shelter from November 1st through April. And I talked a little bit about that during my new segment. Uh, public hearing at the Long Range Transportation Plan, which has a lot to do with public transportation and about how they use future transit and infrastructure and all that stuff like that. Uh, system plan for the city of Missoula, John, Stan uh, John Sand, uh, will speak on this. And this is what he had to say. And the purpose of the MPO is to <clears throat> conduct continuing comprehensive and coordinated regional transportation planning, meet regional transportation needs of state and local agencies, and help secure federal funding for the region. Also encourage in intergovernmental cooperation. So in our case with our MPO, that's the city of Missoula, Missoula County, and the Montana Department of Transportation. The three scenarios that oh. were developed from this process were enhanced connections. Hold on one second. Sorry, uh, we have a new system. But anyways, uh, federal law requires metropolitan areas to have a long-range transportation plan every couple of years that is uh, updated every four years to be eligible for state or federal funding. So part of this is just the cost of regular wages within the department and to be determined by the federal grants and such for future funding. And uh, he goes on and talks about their focus for upcoming projects and more. New connections and regional equity. Um, and then again, those uh, three different scenarios were shared with the community and based on community feedback, a recommended scenario was created, which included um, all projects from regional equity and enhanced connections and additional projects from the new connections. And basically what the city does is so that they, they, uh, they find the top tier problems, you know, they focus on what they think th it is the majority of people want, and then they release another study using those areas to come up with a comprehensive plan for the next few years. And so far, Missoula has done major overhaul of the system five years back when they had to remove Route 10 from the Mullen area on lack of numbers and the fact that Smurf and Stone closed. I think this was more than five years ago, but there was a kind of like a big push for the, uh, but this is what I remember from the Parking Commission uh, talking a little bit more about this as well. And they use the uh, transportation became for the lack of better inefficient and so you know they try to you know that's why they have like you know 10 15 minute you know around the clock mountain line uh, bus travel but of course you know like in recent news they've been kind of slowing a lot of that down uh because of the pandemic and everything like that uh those numbers are still people uh, but as time moves on, more opportunities and routes are popping up, uh, especially up in the Mullen area. You know, like there's a couple of routes that go up like to the Target, Best Buy, that kind of area from the downtown transit center. But as more and more people are starting to move in that area, you're starting to see more bus stops happening as far as, you know, um, uh, expressway and also within the uh, new Mullen area that they're building up England Boulevard. So that's something that they're looking into in terms of long tra long range transportation goals and so john sand talks about the goals that they're currently working on right now so from that community driven engagement um, five goals were developed uh, for the long range transportation plan improve safety and promote health to enhance quality of life advance sustainability and community resilience to protect natural resources and address climate change expand mobility choices to improve efficiency and accessibility for people and goods, connect and connect and strengthen communities to create a more equ equitable region, main, and maintain assets and invest strategically to boost um, economic vitality. Okay, and this is the best way to come up with a uh, with the transportation uh, projects and build better infrastructure near the bus stops and more. Uh, ticket price is two hundred and eight million dollars for the seventy one projects that don't include transit. There is about eleven million allocated for programs that include these electric buses that the city has been trying to get to replace those gas guzzlers. guzzlers. And just on a personal note, I was just walking downtown one day and the gas guzzler, the one that like just pumps out the diesel, it's like, whoo man, that's like that puff of smoke just really hits you. Overall, this is uh, going to cover three major items: safety, roads, transportation. One of the big things about living in Montana is that you need a constant, uh, basically, repairs and, and road repairs and maintenance that's 
always seems to happen and that always has to happen just in terms of building roads and just trying to find the, the cheapest solutions for that and overall this is really good to cover those major three items grants by nature are competitive and these projects are in place of highest to lowest priority and it will be done accordingly. So a lot of times it's like, oh, th you know, there's something came up and it's like, oh, we have emergency fund for this particular project. But then there's the whole idea of like, where it's like, okay, we've been trying to get this project going for some time now. And so we have this priority. And you know, sometimes things have priority and some things don't have priority. And one of the bigger things is, especially when it comes to bridges, it's not just a, um, a Missoula County thing. It's also Montana Department of Transportation thing. So this has to do like trying to figure out and making sure all the paperwork and all the stuff is all clear and clear and concise. So then we can get those grants from federal that goes into the Mont uh, Montana Department of Transportation and then therefore to the communities in the state of Montana. And so far they will be voting on this final package for the long range transportation plan on November 1st will be the voting date. So there's a lot of things happening on November uh, in the 1st of November and early November. But other than that annexation of lower Linda of the lower Linda Vista area. Uh, we can call this good for city council uh, meeting, but let's jump right into Committee of the Whole. And uh, th and they gave an update on the mobile crisis unit and the mobile uh, and the Missoula mobile support team, who is completely different from the uh, crisis unit because the, mo the mobile support team is the team that actually does the calls and talks to the people and does the screening and brief interventions to individuals in crisis stemming from behavioral health health-related issues. Uh, Gretchen Neal, Missoula County a Mental Health Coordinator, talks a little bit more about this. Mobile support team is a, uh, it's a partnership uh, between Partnership Health Center and the, mobile fi the um, Missoula Fire Department. And what they do is they provide mobile consultation, screening, and brief intervention to individuals uh, in crisis. And the crisis is stemming from behavioral, a behavioral health issue. When I say behavioral health, I'm including both mental health and substance use under that umbrella term. Um, the primary goal of the program is to provide the right care in the right setting to people experiencing behavioral health emergencies, right? And we also are aiming to reduce the time and resources that Missoula first responders spend addressing situations where behavioral health is the, is the main concern. And they are looking to expand a lot of their hours of operation to reflect the best hours, but still have limited resources to be able to provide a 24 hour access for mental health emergencies. So most of the calls are gone. Most of the calls, if even if it's a mental health emergency, you always call 911 and then they would this dispatch would send you the mobile crisis unit and they would deem it. But most of the time they would send police officers with the mobile crisis unit to make sure that everything is, you know, safe for the mobile crisis unit who are not properly trained for those kind of situations which might escalate into violence. So a lot of times they got to figure out how they're going to do this. And then they, when they assess the situation, the police officers can just leave and then the mobile crisis unit can continue helping these folks. And uh, the matter of fact, the big thing that happens after the fact was even after the incident occurs, they do follow ups to make sure that these folks are OK. So um, Gretchen talks a little bit about trends that they notice uh, in this unit that launched in, of November of 2020. So they're about a year in. From November 2020 to uh, June of 2021. They went out on 537 calls, and of that 537 calls, they saw 290 unique clients. So that should tell you that there are a lot of repeat, uh, repeat faces. Um, you can also see from this chart here that the number of calls to the mobile support team increased over time, and they've continued to increase. Uh, I mentioned we have a case. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, so uh, so far the gender split is about 50-50 with an emphasis in folks in their 40s and 50s who uh, tend to call this. Native population do have a higher rate, but the primary calls are Caucasian. No surprise since Missoula is 90% uh, white. 40% of clients have uh, had a home and 32% of the clients were not housed. One of the biggest things that the crisis unit has been doing is follow up, like I said before, and Gretchen talks a little bit more about this. And this is what you have to say. Facilitator, um, and now an outreach specialist and a few other folks who do um, nav resource navigation and follow-up for people who've interacted with the mobile support team. During the pilot, our case facilitator made 895 follow-up calls. She made contacts with 712 folks, and so that included the clients, but also case managers, primary care providers, um, family members, etc. cetera. Um, and we did have 21 clients establish with PHC as their primary care provider, all right. So she uh, went on to talk about, uh, you know, like this is a good way to get interaction. And, you know, uh, this is through the partnership healthcare 
but they also wanted to say that other data was not provided uh, from other hospitals and other uh, caregivers. That they, they don't take priority over being like, oh, we're mobile crisis unit. And it's like, therefore, the pub partnership healthcare is the one that will be working with this congruently congruently so that's they just wanted to uh, dispel that uh, right away just to make sure that everybody has equal chance to have uh, their choice in their personal health care um, on site care has dramatically decreased in-house care facilities and saved uh, well of course sh uh, uh, Gretchen Neal also estimated uh, uh, kind of she she this was a very soft estimate of about two hundred fifty one thousand dollars in terms of conservative estimates in emergency room type use um, I should also mention that this is not a mobile crisis unit but the people behind them doing the follow-up and additional help that would otherwise have been treated like hey relax well see you later but at the end of the meeting they spoke about staffing increases to in and to continue and make this a staple in helping those who have mental health crises the fire department is uh, handy as heading the crisis portion of this with more EMTs on the way overall the presentation yielded great results and services this is a, an update and informational only but i can expect the next time they talk about this they'll be looking into getting a bigger budget on the table to hopefully have this mobile uh, uh, mobile uh, crisis intervention unit to be more 24 7 as a result all right so let's talk let's move on let's talk a little bit more about some other uh, committee meetings that happen as well i'm going to talk a little bit about parks and conservation is that looking for a grant toward the city 400 and $57,740, which requires a 100% match, which is a total of $915,000 getting funding for West Side Park. It was a short meeting with Ward 1 rep Representative Heidi One giving support for this grant project and moved forward to uh, City Council for next Monday's final uh, for vote for voting. All right, admin and finance to so tackle the Affordable Housing Trust Oversight Committee. The scoring committee recommended funding one project, the Centralized Housing Solution for uh, uh, Solution Fund, operated by United Way for twenty six thousand two hundred fifty dollars. The overall fund is three hundred thousand dollars for this pilot project, and this is the Affordable Housing Trust. And part of this is that a bunch of community members were gathered through the city's uh, efforts to provide a, a community an engagement a kind of a group of trustees to be like hey uh, we have all this money and now how, how do we think we should use this to help and have the bi biggest impact and the the biggest takeaway was the potential money coming from the affordable housing trust which will bring more than seven hundred thousand dollars of ARPA funds going towards affordable housing creation and stability all communities run through this trust but land sale totaling two million dollars we put uh, be, will We'll put the budget over $3.4 million going to the fiscal year 2022 for additional for affordable housing. All right, Emily Harris Shears, community development, talks a little bit more about this money and plans for uh, the housing trust. So, th as background, the innovation round was the first funding round administered by the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And the innovation round was open from August 23rd through September 24th. The Oversight Committee, the Affordable Housing Resident Oversight Committee, approved the vision and allocated up to $300,000 to be awarded to projects to preserve or increase affordable housing in Missoula. And uh, projects could be from nonprofit or for-profit organizations. We could award funds to new and in-process projects. We were looking forward to awarding grants and loans. Um, and we know that we will also be running um, in partnership with Community Development Block Grant and Home Investment Partnership Funds, the unified application round in the winter of 2022. All right. So, so far, the past funding is trying to launch three new projects that go over budget. And Emily talks a little bit more about The first about round, this. we've received three project proposals, and the total funds requested exceeded the available allocation by $145,250. Uh, there were three projects, um, which were different in type and scope. Uh, one project applied as an acquisition and preservation project. One applied as a construction project and one applied as a consumer housing services project. Three, all three applications were scored using a consistent rubric that was published with the application materials and an eight member scoring committee reviewed applications and made recommendations. Okay, so part of the, yeah. uh, uh, sorry. And part of the criteria is to look for the best bang for their buck. 
um, and to emphasize on retaining living spaces for th these times that we're living in. Finding a place is hard enough, but being able to stay in your current location place makes all the difference. And United Way, like they mentioned in the beginning, will receive $26,000 and will go towards helping 70 people in the city of Missoula. Bang for the buck. Sam Hillard, Reaching Home Programs Coordinator, talks about the real money. So th as background... Oh, I lost it. Oh, go poops. <laughs> I'll find it. There we go. And I think it's, yeah, like that, the number of folks that were able to serve with this money really kind of, um, I mean, the really cool thing about this fund is that it's super flexible. And so some people may need a couple hundred bucks to continue staying with family, for instance, and others may need assistance moving into units. Um, and so I would just say, if I had to estimate like a, a general amount to keep people in housing situations, it's somewhere between $1,200 and $2,200. Um, and so it's a really cost-effective way to, to keep people from entering into that system. And of course, you know, one of the bigger things and the bigger takeaways from this as well is that, you know, some people actually don't know about certain funds that are being put through through the uh, American Rescue Plan and COVID relief monies in which, you know, like rental assistance, that's one of the big things landlords can look to get their uh, money or the renters can look to get the money for the landlords in terms of just trying to figure out how they're going to pay for rent and stuff like that. And there's a lot of money that goes towards that and geared towards that through the menu. I, I think I've talked a little bit about this, but you can look that up at a line and it's it's like renters assistance uh covid relief so you guys can look that up and you can and if you could and you guys can tip into that account as well uh beyond the united ways uh approval of this moving forward uh, let's see hmm and so far, the upcoming budget will be much bigger and be able to serve farther and wider throughout the cities geared towards the affordable and sustaining housing. Anyways, they spoke more about how this community operates more and more, but overall, these monies are a new program and figuring out where to invest are on board, uh, are on the board, uh, or basically, okay, I have the rethink that, okay. But overall, these monies are now pro uh, are a new program and figuring out where to invest are on the board of trustees. Land use and planning gave an update on our Missoula growth poli policy as we round out our sixth year of the, Missoula ma of the Missoula Master Plan, which affects the growth for the next 20 years. Bob Brewer gave a presentation on the five-year review, but I couldn't really find anything uh, quotable, just long strives of ideas that w w what you think should already know, which is, uh, this is important for an ever-growing city. It's a downtown master plan. Uh, Missoula, or 3,600 people, gave input in this growth policy, which included rezoning areas like the north side and become more residential commercial for the continuing urbanization of near the downtown Missoula area. One of the biggest concerns were the housing with property, you know, like yards, those typical kind of homes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and, and following the lines of mixed use, basically meaning that the further you get away from downtown Missoula, the bigger the property around the homes. The city wanted to create an urban commercial areas in the Mullen area, for example, and what we got was a mixed use with larger urban multi-dwelling units with housing put next to other housing. Uh, it's not a perfect system. It's basically like kind of looking like any other city that has the suburbia where they have like, you know, you have the infill in the city and then everything outside the city is a lot of suburbia type stuff. But uh, honestly, it's very much like copying and pasting other urban areas like Portland, Spokane, and Seattle, much like Missoula tends to do in uh, Missoula's urbanization. 3,600 Missoulians agree that they came together to basically do what was the logical next step, taller urban areas with emphasis on modernizing our current infrastructure, not to mention the green spaces. That was one of the bigger things is like, like you, hey, you're building a city, but you need to have some green areas and some places where people walk to. And one of the bigger things is, especially when you're going from the old urban development to the new uh, downtown city planning and growth policy is that they're trying to figure out, it's like, oh, we need an equal ample amount of space of outdoor greenery, uh, parks and rec kind of stuff that matches the urban urbanization as well. So Heather Harp talks about communication, and this is my final quote for city council. There is opportunity for more, more hard feelings to continue to develop through our community and and those who are homeowners have more power over those who are renters in our community. And that has just been the case for a long period of time. And if we are serious about um, tackling equity and poverty in our community, it just makes sense that we start to take the bold steps um, to make sure that we have 
input at the early part of the process when it comes down to land use and not with every single infill project or greenfield project. So just put that into your <laughs> into your consideration in your process then, please. All right, so that was Heather Harp. Um, and that was just a little bit more background on that as well. Um, you can connect the trails, you connect the buildings, but you always have to move into places cheaper and rent is the only thing cheap enough for a lot of folks to people to survive in the disparity of wealth, which is very large in Missoula. And uh, just even just kind of talking from the hip as well, you can't make it rich in Missoula without coming from money. For meetings and more, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us and see the Missoula Growth Policy in action with all the goals and ideas. You can look up Missoula Growth Policy or our Missoula to find out what Missoula wants and thinks about what Missoula needs now. Uh, up next, we have an art clip featuring the Clay Studio, which will wrap up this weekend. So this is your last chance to check out th the Clay Studio. Uh, and then, hey, I'm going to talk about all the uh, festive things that are happening for your Halloween weekend. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about events that are happening this weekend. Kicking things off is, of course, your museum public hours through the Spectrum Discovery Center uh, here at the Public Library. Uh, Spectrum Discovery uh, does science engagement activities. They're going to have some Halloween-themed stuff happening here as well. I'll talk a little bit more about that because they're doing it this afternoon. But starting this morning, it opens at 10. MCAT also opens at 9. Uh, Makerspace open hours at, or is at 10 to 1 p.m. And again, from 2 to 6 p.m. is a great way to do some 3D printing, uh, scanning, and all sorts of fun things with that as well. Tiny Tales and Storytime are at 10.30 a.m. here at the Public Library. You guys can check that out. It's a great way for kids to engage in reading and having some fun times engage in with uh, some in-person learning. Uh, Community Connections, Families First Learning Lab. Community Connections is a program that consists of many interactive exhibits for children that pop up at partner organizations and events that are throughout these communities. These uh, exhibits inspire hands-on exploration and play while focused on building empathy and kindness, social and emotional development, cultural expression, and imaginative and dramatic play. Uh, community connections activities are free and open to the public, and they are start at 11 here at the public library on the second floor. Basically, all the kids' stuff on the second floor. Most events start around 10. It's a great act, uh, uh, opportunity for a lot of people. Yarns and watercolor are on the fourth floor. It's a great way for people to do some stitching, make their own clothes. Hey, it's the time to uh, knit a sweater for that uh, winter special somebody. And then, of course, watercolor if you are interested in doing some arts. Um, virtual Women's Justice Benefit Luncheon. YWCA is watch the annual fundraiser, the Virtual Women's Justice Benefit Luncheon. Learn how you can support the needs for women uh, for safe shelter, housing, and other cr uh, critical services to women, children, and families in our community. YWCAMissoula.org. Uh, Spooky Science Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a science-based stuff for Gilded Science Activities Discovery Branch from 2 to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday this week. Times of Spooky Science. New registration is required. The Spectrum Discovery is open for all visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. MCPS, NAS, truck, trunk or treat. This is a kind of like a for people to trick out their trucks and 
go to the southeast parking lot behind the MCPS admin, admin buildings. And so it's basically up near Sentinel High School. This happens from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. as part of Halloween Wellness Week in um, MCPS Native American Students Services Department and All Nations Health Center invites you to the Night of Trunk or Treating. This event would be the southeast parking. Okay, uh, they repeat this a lot, but prizes are for de de decorated trucks. Trick-or-treaters will vote for their favorite trucks. Trunks, geez, food, treat, uh, items must be prepackaged, uh, pre register uh, online as well. You can find the link at MizzoEvents.net, but it's a $10 suggested donation and all funds go towards the two 2020 oh, 2022 Native American High School Senior Graduation Dinner. Unseen Missoula screams in spirits. If you're interested in going on a walkabout, the Roxy is hosting a walkabout. Enjoy a chilling exploration of Missoula's haunted history featuring dozens of ghostly encounters and inexplic inexplicable tales. This walking tour starts in front of the Roxy Theater and takes appro approximately 90 minutes. So dress warm, folks. Uh, Sisters Amnesia Nonsense Jamboree, a continuation of I um, MCT's Missoula Community Theater's tr uh, play on putting some fun and funny into... Uh, sisters, uh, nuns, and all sorts of uh, Catholic religion type stuff as well. It sounds like they got the uh, costumes from The Sound of Music and continue to do this. But anyways, do that. Family Friendly Musical informs the audience that you hope you brought some butter because we brought all the corn. Uh, UM Jazz Band is playing some jazz music happening tonight at 7.30 p.m. at the University of Montana. The, the UM Big Band and their jazz Equity performance takes the music of LGBTQ and female artists and it'll be playing tonight at 7.30 p.m. Um, hey, I don't know if this is going to be the last market, but it's uh, ticketed as the last Saturday market uh, from 9 to 1 p.m. last weekend. Not really worth going unless you like some of the food trucks. Hey, I, I, hey I, I've lived in Missoula long enough to know that mo you know farmer's market starts to die after like mid-October. So, uh, hey, you guys can still check it out. Moving on. <laughs> Um, MC, um, MCAT, not MCT, we're actually right across the street from MCT, so there will be a lot of confusion. MCAT TV studio tour and training starting at 10 a.m. It's every Saturday at 10 a.m. It's a drop-in, just hang out, and this gives you ability to uh, check out camera equipment, um, make uh, reservations in our studio space. Uh, you also get a chance to use some of our podcast rooms for doing some podcasting, and we teach you everything that you need to know, but this is kind of like what you need to know before we tell you what you want to know. All right, so Moon Randolph Homestead is happening from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and is their last weekend. Visitors at the Homestead can access the site on foot of the North Hills Open Space Trails. See the maps for trail maps uh, to plan your own routes and more, or drive up to uh, Spurlock, up Spurlock Road to uh, do your own tour. Um, Teen Open Studio, they do this every week, and this is from about 12 to 3. This is an open work time for teens with free art supplies and uh, a space to work. There'll be an education ed education intern on site to serve as mentor, welcoming teens to the space and assisting them in finding what they need to do. The program is kept at 12 participants, and also another great uh, opportunity for kids around the teen, uh, young teen age, especially from 9 to 13, is MCAT drop-ins. So we have a um, a thing happening. Uh, uh, MCAT from 1 to 3 every single Saturday. It's a great way for kids to do some stop animation and get uh, on a bit hit the ground running in terms of media production and videos and stuff like that. It is a great way for kids to express themselves and create their own projects. And you get a, and a lot of kids can do it by themselves and it is a great way to be around other kids who do a lot of things by themselves and then hopefully get them to make some movies together. Alright, anyway, Spooky Photo Booth. Mon uh, Montana Natural History Center is hosting a uh, a spo uh, spooky photo booth. You get to take pictures with their skulls and uh, animal carcasses and on display from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Missoula Natural History Center. Um, and volunteers will be on hand to take photos of you with your phone or camera. Uh, Enchanted Forest 2021 is uh, going to be at Free Cycles from 6 to 8 p.m. Join nonprofit arts and education, turning the wheel for our annual family friendly events designed to bring the magic and wonder back to Halloween season. This year's event will be Enchanted Forest outside around a bonfire where you will encounter uh, mythical characters, sharing stories, a guided drum circle, warm music, warm elixirs, and c uh, costume parades. Um, and an Alter to leave your notes and appreciation to your ancestors. A food truck will be on the premises, so you should need uh, to need to nosh. Mm, tickets are limited, so they'll keep the spaciousness among the crowd. So reserve your spot early. 
All right. So there's a lot of uh, Halloween advent uh, adventures and a lot of different things happening as well. But one of the big things that I wanted to also mention is that the, uh, if your uh, cranky Sam Public House is doing a cranky Halloween, their Wishbone Food Trunk will attend that they'll have uh, live music from Pale People, Instagram, Photo Contest, a uh, costume contest, a foam, fortune, a foam for fortune teller, and a costume beer runs prizes through the evening. Come start Halloween off at the Cranky Sam. Halloween all under one roof at Missoula Public Library uh, on Sunday. So this is something that's going into your Sunday and this is going to be some family friendly day happening on Halloween day. Um, Missoula Public Library come to celebrate Halloween with the AUOR family at Missoula Public Library. Families, families, uh, families First Learning Lab will help you celebrate when you uh, hand out candy during trick-or-treating and t um, at Tiny Town in the Cooper Room uh, AB from 1 to 5 p.m. So it's on the fourth floor. Uh, also, they'll have a special art with purpose, spooky edition, families first, learning lab classrooms from 3 to 5 at 4 p.m. The Missoula Public Library Children's Department staff will have special Halloween story time in the Imaginarium on level 2, 1 to 1 30 p.m. Enjoy hand painting from 2 to 4 p.m. Also, staff will be uh, dressed up and handing out candy from 1 to 4 p.m. Don't miss MCAT's Hall haunted Halloween studio with your own. Uh, with special effects and photo opportunities for kids or parents to take ghoulish souvenir photos and their own phones from 1 to 4 p.m. Lastly, Spectrum Discovery Center will throw you with the spooky science, including uh, dry ice demos and cow eye dissections from 1 to 4 p.m. Halloween Candy Crawl is going to be at happening at the um, Southgate Mall. They, they do it every single year, but this year it's going to start at 3 p.m. Goblins and Ghouls, you're invited to join us at the Southgate Mall for Candy Crawl and happens from 3 to 6 p.m. Located at the concourse event space near the Shields. There'll be a store-to-store -store trick or treating inside the mall. A fast way to get a bunch of candy. A Missoula Firefighter House, uh, Firefighters Halloween Trick or Treat, Missoula Fire Department. You can drink by your local fire department. Each station in the Missoula City area will be having Halloween from 5 to 6 p.m. Firefighters will be handing out candy, safety items to kids for trick or treating. Those kids dressed as firefighters receive a special gift. Um, note crews may be out responding on calls, so just be aware of that. All right, let's see. Uh, the locations, there's uh, there's the Pine Street one. Oh, Station 1 is on Pine Street. Station 2 is on Mount Avenue. Station 3 is on 39th Street. Uh, Station 4 is on Lattimore Street. And uh, Station 5 is on Lower Miller Creek. And those are some of your locations for your firehouse uh, Halloweens. Um, Halloween burlesque show. So if you're interested in kind of ending the night a little sexy, uh, join us for the uh, only actual Halloween night in Missoula's Only Speak Easy. Staven Hoop, Missoula's own cigarette girl burlesque team, will be putting on a fever, fever uh, frighteningly good show on Halloween. Yeah, it's Halloween, I guess. A frightening, feverishly, whatever. Uh, doors open at 7.30. Shows start at 8. Costume contest at 11 p.m. $20 cover. Ugh! Uh, but anyways, that they're going to be doing this, and it is always quite top-tier uh, performances. The Josh Farmer Band Halloween Party is going to be at the Union Club. Josh Farmer loves playing at the Union Club, and he's going to be there on Halloween night, starting at 9 p.m. Great jam band and all that and more. If you want to learn, learn more information about this, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. All your events are happening there and more. I'm assuming there's even going to be some more stuff happening on Halloween night that I did not even cover and uh, Monks is going to do the Follies with Perfect Blue. Uh, Halloween 21 is going to be at the Badlander. Uh, Hallow uh, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I covered most of it. Cool. So anyways, I did want to thank you, Fridays, for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Take care, guys.